Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons are 11-0 as they finish the regular season undefeated with a 42-7 victory on Saturday against Arkansas Tech. And Coach, a dominating performance from the defense. We've talked about that, I think, as the season has gone along. But uh, as good as we've seen, not only this year, but as good as we've seen, I think, from a Harding defense in a long time. I think, Billy, is probably as good as we've ever seen. When you think about the fact that Arkansas Tech was a upper tier football team in our league, uh, they have been outstanding on offense the entire year, and we held those guys to 85 total yards, 13 tackles for a loss, six sacks, uh, four interceptions. Uh, I cannot think of a, a better performance by our defense since I've been coaching at Hardy. And it leads to the 11-0 record, which leads to a home football game in the playoffs. For the first time, the Bisons will play at home this Saturday. And as far as the ticket information, tickets are $10. For adult student tickets are $5. And all seating is general admission. No passes are allowed. And tickets will be on sale each weekday from noon until 5 in the Gaines uh, Activities Complex. And also you can buy them on game day, three right. hours uh, before kickoff. But uh, we don't care when you buy the tickets. We right. just want you to buy them because we want to see a great crowd at First Security Stadium on Saturday, 1 o'clock kickoff. For sure, Billy. And the issue that we deal with during a, a break time is that a lot of our students will, will go home. And, and nobody blames them for that. Obviously, we would like for as many of our students that would to stay for that football game. And uh, we would really like to reach out to our community uh, here, the community here in Searcy to, to come and support this football team. And if you haven't watched us play, we would love for you to. We, we have an outstanding group of young men that, that do a great job of representing Harding and this community. And uh, we would love to see a big crowd in, in First Security Stadium this Saturday. And Coach Huckabee, only 28 teams in all of Division II football right. are still playing right now. Right. And you know, when you look at this football team and look at what they've been able to accomplish, this, this football team leads the conference in scoring offense, in scoring defense. We lead the nation in rushing offense. We lead the nation in scoring defense, total defense, and rushing defense. It's an outstanding football team, and we would, we would love uh, for this community to get behind this group of young men. It's a tremendous matchup as well. We'll talk about that later on in the show. Central Missouri, they've only lost two football games on the season, a 9-2 and two to, nine and two team coming in on Saturday. Senior Day, Coach, uh, was a tremendous uh, success. Obviously, we talked about the victory, and we honored some outstanding seniors on Saturday. There were 25 of these young men that we honored, and you're, you're talking about guys like Trayvon Bigelow, who, Bigelow, who we were looking at right there, J.D. Campbell. Uh, you know, that's Dwayne Carter right there from Pensacola, Florida. Uh, Deontay Garrett from El Dorado, Arkansas. And uh, that's Colin Harper from Birmingham, Alabama. Just a, a group of young men that are from all over the country that have come to Harding and bonded together in a tremendous way. It's a tremendous brotherhood. That's Eric Kelly right there from Houston, Texas. Tucker Koontz from Mississippi, his mom and dad and, and uh, fiance were here. That's Michael Latu from San Mateo, California. Seth McBride from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And that's Scott Middleton from Jasper, Texas. Just a bunch of young men that have poured into this program everything that they have. And that's Park Parish right there, who is obviously one of the fin finest young men that have ever worn the black and gold. And I could say that about this whole group. I mean, you're talking about quality, quality individuals. Men that are going to go out and make a big difference in this world, in, the, in their own communities, in their churches, where they're working. I mean, I love these guys, and, and I think that you can tell that it is really, really a special group. That's L.J. Smith from Stuttgart, Arkansas, and Cordell Zielinski from Grand, Oklahoma. Just a wonderful group of young men. Now, that's a, that right there, that's Clayton Pankey. Clayton is a student assistant for us because of all the injuries that he had as a as a player and has done a fantastic job. That's a, that's some of my old players. Who yeah, were, who I were. wanted to know what was going through your mind at this point when you're watching some of the old players talking about uh, talking about you. I, I can I, see the look on your face. I handled it great until Jordan Huckabee came up there and said, "Thanks, Dad." And when he did that, I lost it. And uh, but I. 
honestly, Billy, I, I was really pleased that I was able to hold my emotions together for most of the day. This was a tremendous moment right here. When, well, uh, a lot of the old bison, as we call them, came out uh, to join you, and uh, I heard an ovation at First Security Stadium that you don't hear just uh, all the time. Well, that was my old guys on the right and my current guys on the left, and I cannot even put into words the feeling that I had as I was walking through that group of young men. That means so much to me. Uh, it was just so, so special. And this is right before uh, kickoff, and uh, you have a football game to play right after that. I, I know that. Uh, <laughs> that's two little boys right yeah. there that mean a whole lot yeah. to me. That's that's my oldest grandsons, and then that's my, that's my great nephew. And uh, one person that I want to point out in this in this uh, group is, is Miss Charlene Proc, mm -hmm. yes. who is uh, the wife of Coach Proc, who was my mentor, who brought me back to Harding, and had such a tremendous influence in my life, my coaching career, and to be able to honor Gigi, is what we call her, mm -hmm. and Coach Proc at the same time was really special and important to me. And a great moment right before the football game on Saturday with the Bisons played Arkansas Tech. Stay with us when we return on this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We will start with first half highlights of the Bisons and Arkansas Tech on Senior Day right after this. It takes a lot to know what is love. All right, don't hold back now. Give me all you got. Oh. And there is never a day Maybe baseball is your game. I'm hey, pal, bring it in right here. You were always there for me. How about golf? Okay, uh, choke down a little bit. Guiding me, always to succeed. I wanna thank you for that time. And I'm proud to say you're mine. You showed me everything that I should know. You showed me. Appreciation. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Week 11 after the Bisons win on Saturday 42-7. to We will start with first quarter highlights right here. And the Bisons uh, defense comes up with a big play right off the bat. Got off to a great start. Uh, you know, great pressure by our defensive front. We ended up forcing a turnover and we get the ball and we're not able to move it very well. They were giving us a bunch of different looks defensively. We attempted a field goal. I was uh, disappointed that we didn't make it, but uh, it's still zero to zero and here comes our defense again. There's well, that speed from uh, Scott Middleton. Without a doubt. One of our uh, 13 tackles for loss. This is Trayvon's first sack. He had a fantastic rush on that play and was able to get to the quarterback. That was a big third down if I'm not mistaken and we just took the screen pass completely away from them and forced them to punt. Frank Herbert did a tremendous job for us returning punts on Saturday. This was his first uh, trip back there because Corey was a little bit banged up with his, uh, had a little bit of a foot problem and Frank did a great job for us. We come back, we run the triple and there's Park Parish hitting that crease and going in for our first touchdown and it's seven to nothing for the good guys. That's just the beginning of what would turn out to be a huge day for Park Perry. Park had a huge day and honestly, we were able to rush for 420 something yards, which is 40 yards uh, above our, our average. Another huge tackle for loss. And you can see the pressure from our front and uh, boy, that was really close to being a big play right there inside the red zone. Dalen Skidmore. Got his hands on that. Right. Uh, this is uh, Dwayne Carter on the carry, and you know Dwayne's working for good yardage, and somebody gets that hand in there and strips that ball away. And as we talked about in the post game, that was the, the disappointing part of this game is that we, we put the ball on the ground too much on offense, but we're going to work to correct that this week. Another, so another good tackle for a loss. Yeah, seven, 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 seven nothing going to the second quarter. Right, exactly. This is a handoff to Michael Latu again, and he gets good yardage. This is the counterplay to Zach Shelley, and Zach had another really good day for us. Zach's had a great year all the way around, and uh, but they do force us to punt, and Tristan kicks it away, and we get a good roll, and the ball's inside the 35-yard line, and our defense is set up in, in a good spot again. 
Great pressure again by our front four, and that's Benjamin Shields with the pick. And we have the ball on the 25 yard line, and this is an opportunity for us to get the ball in the red zone and make something positive happen. And that was a huge play. That was a fourth down conversion that we threw to uh, Andrew Dather. And Andrew made a one guy miss, got inside the 10, and we come back and we run the, this is what we call our quarterback ISO play. It's a follow play where the quarterback follows the B back. We run that play two times in a row and Park gets in the end zone. And that's, uh, he's just adding to his school record of touchdowns scored. Park's second of what would be three touchdowns on the afternoon. Not much going for them offensively, especially once we kind of got past the first quarter. Uh, this is a tackle for a loss by Cordell Zelensky. And we come back and run the counter play again to Zach, and he was so close to busting that thing. Uh, I thought he was going to take it to the house. We come back, we run the midline, and uh, this is the midline double. Park breaks as he has many times this year that particular play, and that's a 64 yard touchdown. At that point, we're up 21 to nothing, and I'm feeling pretty good, like we're, we have control of the game, especially considering how well our defense was playing. Another huge tackle for loss. That's uh, Cordell's, I'm sorry, that was uh, Trayvon Bigelow. You got Arthur Akers back there. We're just putting tremendous pressure on those guys. Trayvon won it with nine tackles on the afternoon. He had a tremendous day. You can see the pressure again. Uh, we're forcing the quarterback to step in, up in the pocket, and we've got, that's Arthur Akers on that tackle. Quarterback is again running for his life. He puts the ball up in the air. That's a pick by Dalen Markham with 19 seconds on the clock, and he takes it in for a touchdown, and I don't know that I have ever been a part of a football season where we have scored so many touchdowns right before the end of the first half. And I think that's a tribute to our defense and how well they play. And that was a critical touchdown right at the end of the first half. The two interceptions, I wanted to, you to talk about those. Right. I thought they were caused by the pressure from the defensive line. Benjamin Shields, I thought the interception that he came up with, I'm not sure that uh, Jabias Cross ever saw him. Right. And then uh, the pick six from Dalen Markham, I thought also was the pressure from the defensive line. And, and honestly, Billy, that was a function of what had happened the entire first half because even when we were not sacking him, we had so much penetration into the backfield. I think we were able to rattle him and get him out of his comfort zone and, and force some throws that he normally would not have made. And of course, we ended the day with four interceptions. And one of those, of course, was in the end zone that stopped a drive for them early. So, great day. When you went into the halftime locker room and you looked at the numbers, 43 yards of total offense for Arkansas Tech at halftime and no points. Well, as I said earlier, I felt like we had control of the football game. We had gotten untracked offensively after a, you know, kind of a slow start. That's not unusual for us because so, uh, many times we will go into a football game and we will see a defense played by a, an opponent that we have not seen them play. And it takes us a little while to adjust to that, but we adjusted well. And as I said, we ended up with 450 total yards and scored 35 points offensively. Of course, seven of those points uh, of our 42 total were scored by our defense on that pick six right at the end of the first half. And you talked about the second quarter being so successful all year long in the second quarter for this football team. What's the key to that? What has been the key to the second quarter for the Bisons this year? Well, I, I just really believe this team has been focused on finishing all year long. And you know, we're gonna finish the first half. We're gonna finish the second half. Uh, you make things happen as a result of great preparation, great team unity, and a tremendous desire. And these guys have reflected that all year long. So the Bisons had, had a 28 to nothing lead at halftime. Stay with us. We'll come back. We have second half highlights and a lot more on this week's show with Coach Huckabee when we come back. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Oh, look. 
look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. At this point in our highlights, at halftime, the Bisons with a 28 to nothing lead starting the third quarter. And the Bisons with the football like you like to do it in the third quarter after deferring for the option for the second half. Right, and we start off well. This is a triple option. We get the pitch off to Eric Kelly. He makes a great run, and we have good blocking out in front of him. This was a great play. This is Luke Bowser, who is our red shirt freshman tight end, and I believe that's the first pass that he has had thrown to him, and he caught it, which was a great deal for us. We don't throw that much out of that formation. Come back with uh, triple again, and great job by Park, except for the end of that run. You know, we, we had done such a great job of moving that ball down the field, and then we, we get stripped at the end, and. Uh, that's something, obviously, that we have to address this week. Hand off on the first phase of the triple. Uh, that's Dwayne Carter it, playing B back right there. And Park running the option. This is the toss play. That's the uh, Grant Kimberlin, I believe, over right there in the next to the sideline on the tech side. Great hustle by Andrew Dather. Great hustle by that. Andrew to recover that because that was another one of those bad deals. And uh, we come back and we run the midline and we get a good gain on that. Uh, we hand the ball off to the B back. That's Romar Reeds, true freshman from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, doing a great job. Look at that determination as he continues to work down the field. Great interception right there by Isaiah Jefferson, one of our four. Uh, run the toss play again. That's Eric Simmons, who's been so dynamic with the ball in his hands all year long. And we're continuing to move the ball down the field. Still 28 nothing as we go to the fourth quarter. Right, this is the first phase to Michael Latou. And Michael does a great job. Gets the ball inside the 20 yard line. Hand the ball off to him again. And Michael breaks out the back door, and look at that determination to get in the end zone. Great job by Michael, who played great without the ball also on Saturday. He was looking for that pylon coach, he was, and he found it. He sure was. He was determined to get in the end zone. Uh, this is Terrence Dingle in the, uh, in the football game running the offense for us. Terrence did a great job on Saturday. I think he played 15 plays with one minus. That's the pitch to Brandon Gates, and look at that determined running by Brandon. Great blocking out in front of him. Uh, this is the belly trap to Romar, and Romar's inside the 15-yard line. We come back and run the toss play to Brandon, and great blocking out in front of him by Colby Webb. He gets two guys blocked. Brandon gets in the end zone, and that's the 42 points for the day. So the Bison's in control at this point, late in the fourth quarter, up 42 to nothing. And we are continuing to just completely stone their offense. That's really all you can say. Uh, you're, you're looking at tackle after tackle after tackle for loss. And I just can't say enough about the way our defense played. And honestly, at that point, that was not our starters. This was very disappointing. Uh, we do have some guys in there that haven't played a lot, but uh, we don't put the ball on the ground at any time, and that's the only score they got for the day. Sad that we couldn't preserve the shutout. But there's our favorite formation, the victory. And uh, what an ending to a great senior day for our guys. Absolutely beautiful weather. 42-7 to over Arkansas Tech. Culmination of a, of a great football season, and to be 11-0 is unreal. And again, you get the feeling from this football team, though, in talking with a lot of the, the guys afterwards, a lot of the guys yesterday, I was at the student center, and uh, it's a very business-like approach, and even when we found out that it would be Central Missouri, there was celebration to know you're going to play at home, but there was also, okay, let's go to work. Right, and the 11-0 and 0 is something that these guys absolutely expected. That's what they expected from our first meeting in January. Uh, 
as I have said throughout the course of this season, the senior leadership has been outstanding. The upperclassmen leadership has been outstanding. And these guys are extremely focused in it. You know, when we found out, okay, we're playing Central Missouri, these guys obviously know what a challenge that is. This is an outstanding football team that is, is coming to town on Saturday. But as they've done all year long, uh, we started to work last night, and they will work extremely hard throughout the course of this week to get prepared to play the very best game that, that we can play, and we are willing to live with the results. We are gonna, we're going to lay it on the line for each other, and uh, we're looking forward to the game on Saturday. We're going to hear from some Bisons here in just a few moments, but right now, Coach, let's sit back and enjoy the, the, uh, the, si the sounds and the sights of a celebration. You know, I like the, I like the uh, sportsmanship that is in our league, uh, and that's reflected by those handshakes. That's a lot of fun. Now, I, I know that means a lot to you there, Coach. What a sweet picture. You know, all 10 of my grandkids, my three children, my sister, my brother, my brother, uh, my sister's boys were able to be here, uh, Miss Proc. The only person that, you know, I, I'm sad, my dad was not be able to be there and my brother-in-law, Tim, because my dad is, is not in very good health. And my brother-in-law, Tim, selflessly gave himself up and stayed with him up in Northwest Arkansas so my sister could come. But what a sweet, sweet day for me. And again, the Bisons 11-0 now after the 42-7 victory on Saturday. Now it's time to catch up with a couple of Bisons, and we always love to hear from the players after the game. And here's Park Parrish, followed by Cordell Zielinski. You hold one of the top offenses in the conference to 85 total yards and no points. Uh, what was what were your thoughts uh, on the defensive performance today? Oh, my, absolutely killed it. That's uh, it, it's just fun getting to go out there with those guys all the time and uh, getting to go out there and uh, I guess kind of prove to the nation we, we're real out here. Yeah. So it's just really fun. I just got to say, you know, thanks to the coaches because they it all starts with them on on Monday. We don't even have practice Monday, and so they're they're spending that whole time watching film. We're watching film. We come in Tuesday, and our coaches know so much. So. Uh, they really do a great job putting us uh, in spots for us to make plays, and then uh, the guys on the field, uh, they just go out there and we do our job and we, uh, we, take, it, we, we take it to them and uh, get after them. So. Okay, that was obviously Cordell Zielinski. Maybe we'll hear, we'll, I know we're going to hear from Park Parish a little bit later on, maybe not in this uh, piece right here, but we are going to hear from him. Uh, as he will talk about Central Missouri as well, but right. obviously Cordell Zelensky, what a tremendous senior for this football team. The salt of the earth. If you just, uh, if you knew Cordell and his heart for service, if you knew Cordell and his accountability, how hard he works in the classroom. Uh, he had an internship with Walmart this summer uh, in, in Bentonville. He's a top-notch student. He's a spiritual leader on our football team. He is a tough man with a warrior spirit. And you know what, Billy? I could say that about a ton of our guys. It's just uh, such a special group of men mm -hmm. that represent Harding football, that represent Harding University in such a great way. And I am so proud of them, I can't put it into words. All right, stay with us here on this week's show. We still have much more ahead. We're going to take a look at some of the highlights around the watch party when we come back, and we'll hear from Park Parish as he talks about Central Missouri and look ahead to the playoff game with Central Missouri after this break. short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Find fun activities to do, like boating and biking, or camping and hiking, plus much more. 
To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. And on Sunday, we had a watch party inside the Hammond Student Center and a great turnout uh, for that and just a festive atmosphere. I, I told you before, I said, I don't think I see anyone here without a smile on their face. And you said, well, Billy, that's for good reason. Absolutely. And uh, it was a celebration on, on Sunday. It was, and different than the last two because the last two times we weren't sure exactly whether or not we were going to make it in because right. we were a lower seed. <laughs> now, fortunately for us, we did, and this is our third trip to the playoffs in five years. But because we were assured basically of our seed going into this day, uh, it was more of a, okay, let's see what's going to happen. And so many awesome people that were there. That's Dalen Markham right there who's played so great for us throughout the course of this season. Uh, several of our younger players right there looking for, looking at that bracket and trying to determine where we're going to be. That's John Aaron Howell and Cole Blick and staff. And we got a little air time on the NCAA did, yeah. site, so that yeah. was great. And I think everybody's on their phone right now saying, okay, uh, Central Missouri, Central Missouri, yeah. here in First Security Stadium on Saturday. Let's go. And so it is Central Missouri. They are the opponent. Very good football team. They're 9-2 and two on the season. We'll get Coach Huckabee's thoughts uh, on Central Missouri here in just a few moments. But let's check in with Bison quarterback Park Parrish, and he talks about the foe, Central Missouri. Well, you know, I mean, it's a big deal to make the postseason in football. It's something that's hard to do. Uh, not very many teams get a chance to play. So uh, to be able to come here and gather as a team, have a little party, you know, and a, a watch party, uh, it was fun. It was a blast. It's, it's cool to get to do so uh, as a team like this. So we're excited. And then it's all about getting ready to play Central Missouri. I um, mean, you know, we weren't really worried about who it was going to end up being. Uh, you got to go through everybody, at, you know, as you go. So uh, we're excited to finally know and be able to start preparing for them. Well, what a go great spokesperson Park Parish is for this program. He makes me feel old though. You know, I watched him play junior right. high football and peewee football and watching him grow up. Now you talk about Central Missouri. This is a very good team coming in. We're in the playoffs. Everybody's good from here on Everybody's out. Everybody's good from here on out and, and you could argue that the MIA is the the outstanding conference in Division II football and I don't think anybody would argue with you. Uh, when you look at the national championships that have come from that league, especially in the last 10 or 15 years, Northwest Missouri has been a dominant football team. Uh, they were the they are the defending national champions, and they had a great record in that league this year. But you also have Emporia State and Central Missouri in the playoffs from the MIAA, and those are two outstanding football teams as well. Uh, when they played each other, they had a barn burner at Warrensburg and uh, went into double overtime, and, and Emporia was able to win that football game. But when you just put put the film up and you start looking at Central Missouri and you see how well coached these guys are in every single phase of the football game. Uh, and they have very talented players. Uh, it, it, it's a great challenge and one that we gladly accept. And we, we know that we're in for a, a dog fight on Saturday, but as you said earlier, what do you expect when you get in the playoffs? You're gonna, you're gonna play the top teams in the country and we're just glad to be there and have an opportunity to compete with our brothers uh, this Saturday at one. It was senior day on Saturday for the Bisons. It was also senior day for Ronnie Huckabee, and there was a special reception after the game on Saturday night, and we'll come back and have a look at that in our final piece after this break. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, Consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Back on Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. And again, we talked about the special reception after the game on Saturday in Cone Chapel. And let's look at that right now. 
Coach Huck came 31 years ago, I came 30 years ago. And I was a coach, uh, along with Coach Huck, and we played golf for what, 10 years, probably three or four times a week in the summer. Uh, so we got a football coach retiring, but I also have one of my best friends. And uh, just appreciate you so much. But he's always been very intense, very hard, and very loving. And he's been a great coach for Harding University. Uh, I've quoted a little saying that's hung in my office door for years, you know, and, and it made me think of Ronnie today. The quote says, I am one. I'm only one, but I am one. And I can't do everything, but I can do something. And that's something that I can do, I will do, by the grace of God. And to me, that exemplifies Coach Huck. I moved from linebacker to playing D-line for Coach Huck, and I uh, did not do well. At the end of the spring semester, we had a deal where um, you go in and you talk to your coach and you have an evaluation. And I did not want to go have that talk. Um, I knew what was going to happen, because I, I mean, I'm not a fool. I, I knew I wasn't very good, and I was on a big scholarship. And I did not want to go in that meeting with Coach Huck. Um, I was dreading it. When I went in that meeting and I sat down uh, and I waited for him to tell me that you're not going to make it, your scholarship is, we, we need that scholarship money back. He didn't say that. He said, Simmons, you need to know something. For you, the sky's the limit. And I'm going to tell you, that, that conversation changed my life. Changed my life. One thing I was struggling with a lot this summer was just daddy wounds. Growing up without my father, I dealt with that a lot. Um, and the verse that came to me this summer was uh, Psalm 685 when it talks about he's a father to the fatherless. When I think about Coach Huck, I know for me, and, and I'm sure plenty of other guys, you were that um, and you embodied that. So just thank you for being that father that I needed. Um, always giving me words of encouragement, the affirmation that I never got from my actual dad, Coach Huck. And, Coach Simmons, they always give it to me, and, and that's something that I really, I really need. Um, um, so I'm just so thankful um, that I, I, I'm here on this team, and, and man, I'm gonna ball out for you for as many more as we can go. And, uh, I love you. Thank you to our players. This has been. This has never been a job to me. I've been able to get up out of my bed in the morning <clears throat> and come to a place where I was loved and I had the opportunity to love, where I had the opportunity to build, where I had the opportunity to mentor, and it has made a tremendous difference in my life. I love Harding University. I love Harding football, and I am so very blessed. Thank you very much. a great tribute to a great football coach but a better man and uh, I think that's what that was all about right there there were there were no not a lot of football stories it was about Ronnie Huckabee the man that's what I love well it was a really really sweet uh, experience obviously it's very emotional for me uh, 
people that I love and uh, you know across generations in that room. You go all the way back to Coach Jerry Moat, to to Jerry Eskew, who's been a big encourager to me in my life. And a lot of us were thinking about Coach Brock during that time and the influence that he had on us. And then you come all the way from 1986 to 2016, and the young men that have come into my life through Harding football that have blessed me and my family in such a tremendous way. Uh, I've said it many times, it will never get old. I'm a blessed, blessed man. Well, what a tremendous day on Saturday with the Bisons finishing up the regular season at 11-0. and Coach, we've got a big game on Saturday, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Looking forward to it, Billy. Thank you. That's all for our time this week on Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We hope to see you at First Security Stadium on Saturday. Don't forget, 1 o'clock start time, the Bisons taking on Central Missouri in the NCAA playoffs. We'll see you next time.